everyone and welcome to The Hero Within. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about my past history with depression and how it's still an ongoing process. Now for today, Kevin is not going to be here in the video, but don't worry, he's going to be in the next one. So let's talk a little bit about my past with my depression. So I came from a family that was decently well off. It was middle uh, income to upper middle income. And my family, they're both, uh, both parents are immigrants that came to this country, one a lot younger than the other. My mother came from an Asian country while my father came from a uh, country in the, the Caribbean, but he was more Americanized than her. So they had very different styles of how they were planning to raise me. My mother was a lot more strict. If you heard the term tiger mom, that is exactly what my mother was. You know, the piano lessons to everything was very, very much a traditional Asian child um, rearing as I grew up. And then my father was more the hugging and the kissing and you know, the I love you's and everything. So it was a very different style. And because of, they had very different style about going about things, they argued a lot about many different things, including me which made it very hard for me to not take it personally. So as I was growing up, it was difficult for me to ignore the fighting that they had and sometimes when, you know, the arguments that I had with my mother about everything from the cell phone to etc. to the point where I started growing a deep depression and kind of an inferiority complex and a lot of things where I feel I I couldn't be the best child. I wasn't the perfect child that I wanted to be. So this made it so hard for me to stay happy when I was younger. I'm not saying I didn't have a, I didn't, I'm not saying that I didn't have a great childhood compared to some people I did. And I appreciate the way my parents reared me. However, there were things that I wish that they did differently because I was an extremely sensitive child. So because I was extremely sensitive, I took everything extremely personally. And from there, I kind of went into the world always constantly thinking, I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough or smart enough or great enough to do anything. And that carried all the way into my 20s where I had no capability to see further than that. But I'll tell you when things actually change. So things started to change for me when I went to college. Now, I admit the first year I was in college, I practically never came home because I spent my time being angry at the way my life was compared to it is right then in college in my first year where it was peaceful and it was easy and I didn't feel like I was constantly blamed for anything. But, you know, I was, I had like a lot of problems and the biggest problem is that I was extremely introverted and I, it was hard for me to make friends, it was hard for me to even make eye contact. So I had to spend a lot of time focusing and fixing myself. Just the simple things like being able to say hi to people and make friends and introduce myself. Things I already know how to do but was too shy to do it. From there, I was getting better but I still wasn't there. And eventually I went into the military around 2009 when the economy was really bad. That was probably the best thing I could have done for myself. And from there I blossomed under a amazing Air Force family that encouraged me, they believed in me, and they saw so much potential in me. And um, I grew to be, you know, a really great staff sergeant. And no matter how I feel or how it ended up turning out, the military was still considered the best opportunity I could have ever had. Now, in the military, I did realize something, that my depression was still there and it was still difficult and almost uncontrollable at times. And that almost cost me my friendship with, you know, my best friend, you know, as you know, who is Kevin. We had an argument and we stopped talking for a little bit and from there I realized this was my fault, that the argument was caused by me. And I realized there, I couldn't handle it anymore. For the longest time, I was trying so hard to not use medication because I felt that I could do it myself. But right then I knew that maybe medication was the best thing for me and it could 
help me heal. And when I started taking medication, I started feeling a little bit better. But the work wasn't done yet. So what I learned was medication alone wasn't going to help me. And I ended up getting into therapy eventually. But I also started working on many other things about myself. Aspects that I didn't like. How I get frustrated and angry easily. Just like my mother. How I would be scared of a lot of different things. Just like my father. And overly cautious. So I spent time breaking those molds. I spent time, you know, taking risks on purpose. Doing things I always want to do but was scared of. I did a Spartan race, which was something that I always wanted to do. I started traveling around the world, which is something I always wanted to do. I started this YouTube channel, which is something I always wanted to do. There was a lot of things that I told myself that I would do it no matter how tired I was, no matter how risky it sounded, no matter what it was. If I wanted to do it, this was important enough for me to do it, then I will go do it. And as you can see, I'm actually filming this from Vancouver right now. I'm in Canada filming this because I always wanted to go to Vancouver. And I've never regretted anything that I've done for myself so far. But there's also a lot of other aspects. I started getting more into Buddhism, learning about ways to help myself. I'm in psychology classes to get my master's degree, and I've been learning so much about the brain and how to help myself. There's a lot of other things I picked up on. Self-improvement videos like Impact Theory is a really great channel. There's a lot of other good channels out there practical psychology, etc., that really do give you inspiration and give you the minds of people who are successful, who are able to go beyond what all of us feel, which is that we're never good enough inside to do what we really want to do in life. And that's really the key, is trying to find a way around the thought pattern, because you're born with that unless you're a sociopath. And surround yourself with support and friends, which is extremely important because nobody can do this alone. I know a lot of people love to say, well, they did it by themselves, or there's, you know, the lone wolf that managed to get up there and become... No, there's always someone in the way. There's always someone, there's going to always be a hard path. But it's so much easier when you have friends and family and people who care about you to be around you. And because we're social creatures, that is significantly important. And that is where I am today, realizing that me, the person who's always done it by myself, cannot do it alone. Realizing that I need people to lean on. I need times where I need to be upset. I need times where, you know, I can depend on somebody else. And that is the real key to life, is having a good support group and doing things that you're scared of doing, but you're doing it anyway, because you always want to do it. And you'll never have a regret that says, I wish I didn't do this. I wish I didn't even try. No, you'll never have that regret. The only regret you'll ever have in life is I wish I would have done it in the first place. I wish I would have tried. And so, I still have depression today, but I'm still trying. I may have depression the rest of my life, but I'm handling it, and I've addressed it, and I'm accepting of it. And maybe someday, I'll be able to have the best coping methods, and I'll be able to have a mostly happy life, because nobody has a perfectly happy life. And if any of you are out there feeling down, you can do it. It's gonna take you a while. It took me like over 10 years to even get to this point and even now I'm still working on it. And I'm still not perfect, but I'm okay with accepting I'm not perfect for the first time in my life. I'm okay with that. And that's just a little bit about me and my depression. And next time, I'll talk about other things. Alright heroes, that's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed this little vlog of mine. Next time I'll talk a little bit about some of all the other fun stuff that I have in my noggin. However, if you have any questions or comments, please put it down below and I'll try my best to answer them. Also, if you like our content, please 
like, share, subscribe to our channel. We love you guys and we love all the people that have already signed on. We appreciate it. And uh, as always, continue to gain knowledge, take action, and be unstoppable. See ya.